Hello and welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how you can make your very own grapple hook system. Now before we started let me show you how the system works. So I'm going to move over to the edge here as you can notice I have my wonderful costume and then I'm just going to click and hold. Now as soon as I stop holding I fall back down again and let's say I want to go to the top of this building I click on the top I hold and then if I maybe click in the middle, I'll go over and then I'm on the roof. Of course, there's a limit to the system, so I can't click all the way over there and the rope works. That just wouldn't be feasible. But if we click here, it goes ahead and it works. Luckily, this is a super short script. It's only 87 lines long. Now let's head into Roblox Studio into a brand new place and I'll show you how you can do this. This script is super easy to do, so let's get started. So all we need for this entire system to work is one singular script. Keep in mind all of the scripts that I'm going to be using today can be found and downloaded in the description down below. So we're going to start off by heading to start a GUI, we're going to click on the plus and then we're going to add a local script. We can then call this grapple hook system. So let's go ahead and do that, grapple hook system and then we can start with the scripting of this system. So first of all, we're going to have to define quite a few variables. So we're going to start off by defining the player. So let's say local player equals game.players.localPlayer. And now what this variable does is it stores a variable called games.player.localPlayer. And this is going to be our local player. So from the local player, we can get their name and all type of useful information about them. Then we're going to get the humanoid root part. On side of a humanoid you have the torso and where the torso is is the humanoid root part and the humanoid root part is just a main thing to symbolize that that character is a humanoid but we can use it to our advantage in coding so we can say local humanoid root part equals and then we're going to say player dot character and then we're going to use the wait for child. Now we use the wait for child system to make sure that we're not trying to get the humanoid root part before the human has loaded in. So humanoid root part, and that's just a safety. That's just a safety part if you want to think of it like that. Then we're going to get the player's mouse. So once again, we can use the player variable we created above to say local mouse equals player get mouse. Then we're going to make a variable called debalance. This makes sure we don't have multiple grapple hooks coming out of the person. So we can say local debounce equals false. Now we can also say local mouse down equals false. And this variable is designed to tell us whether the mouth button is down or not. Then we have a few more variables which we're going to set that change how the rope acts. So we're going to say local max distance and then we're going to leave it or set it to a number. Okay, so this is how far somebody can click away and a rope still spawns. Personally, I like to use 300, but you could set this to a much smaller distance if you don't want people to have really longer ropes. Then we're going to set the winch speed. So how this entire system works is it creates a part connected to the humanoid root part and a part created and then it winches the user up using the winch feature inside of the rope. I like to use a winch speed of a 500 but of course you can use something completely different and then we say local winch speed equals 500 but of course you can use a different winch speed if you want it to be slower. Then we're going to say local rope visible equals true. Now, do you want your rope to be visible? If you do, you can set it to true. If not, you can set it to false. And this will either make a rope appear or either a rope will not appear. So it's pretty simple. Then we're going to get the rope color and we can do this by saying local rope color equals brick color dot new. And then we can pick some of the colors here. So that's just like going to plus and then creating a part and then giving it a color. You can see if we click on any of these colors, it has a name. Let's say we want a yellow rope. We're going to click on the color yellow. You can see it's called new yellow. And then we just say new. Uh, I think it was there. New. There it is. And then we put it in here. And now the rope will be yellow and it will be visible and it can be long as up to 300. Now we're going to create a quick function that calculates the difference between two vector 3 objects and around to the nearest 10. Now as you can see we have this max distance variable 
and this stops the rope from being too long. And of course we need to calculate the difference between the two vectors. So we're gonna say local function distance underscore between underscore vectors. Then we're gonna put u comma v and then we're gonna drop a line. Okay, so this part is a bit confusing as it's maths. So we're gonna say local difference equals u minus v then we're going to say local distance equals difference dot magnitude, okay? And then we're going to round to the nearest 10 and we can do this by saying distance equals math.floor distance divided by 1 plus 0 0.5 times by 1, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to return the distance. How this function works is it takes away v from u to calculate the difference. Then we calculate the distance by getting the magnitude or what can be referred to as the length. Now we can start by doing some coding. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define a function called attachment. So we're going to say local function attachment method comma parent and then we're going to drop a line. Now we're going to say if method equals equals create with a capital C, then local attachment equal instance.new attachment, make sure you spell it correctly, and then attachment, oops, accidentally forgot to make a new line, let's fix that. And then what you have to do is you say attachment dot parent equals parent. Then we're going to say else and then we're going to say parent.attachment. Make sure to spell it right because this could be a proper mistake and then destroy. So what this function does is it checks if the method that we pass above is create. If it is create then it creates a brand new attachment and then it sets the attachment parent to be the player. If not it, de if not, it destroys the attachment. Next, we can drop a couple of lines and we can start by detecting if the mouse button has gone up. What we can do is we can start by saying mouse dot button one up. So if the left clicker goes up, this function will fire and then say connect function. And then we're going to say mouse down equals false. So if the left clicker button goes upwards, it's going to set the mouse down function to false because the mouse clicker is no longer down. Next, we can calculate when the mouse button goes down. So we can say mouse dot button. Oops, don't accidentally set the variable there. Mouse dot button one down connect function and then mouse down equals true because now the mouse is down. Then we're going to say if debounce equals false, then debounce equals true. So now we're making sure we have a debounce and a debounce stops a ton of issues. For example, we can't have them click multiple times and then the script run multiple times because that could cause a lot of issues. Then we're going to say local hit position equals mouse dot hit dot p. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get what the mouse hit when the button went down. Then we have to calculate the distance between the two vectors. So we're going to say local distance equals distance between vectors, which is our function from above. And then we're going to say hit position, comma, humanoid root part. And that's how we can get the distance. Then we're going to say if distance is larger than or equal to max distance, then, and then we're going to continue with our code. So what this does is it runs when the button goes down, it sets the mouse down to true because the left clicker is obviously down. Then it sets the debounce to true. Then what we do is we calculate the distance between the two vectors by passing where the mouse hit and where the human is in our space. And then if the distance is less than the max distance, which we set above, the code will continue. Now, then what we're going to do is we're going to write in a couple more lines. So first we need to create a part where the attachment is going to connect to. So let's say local new part equals instance.new and then part. And then what this is doing is it's creating a brand new part. Then we're going to say new part. Oops. Let's fix that there. 
accidentally once again carries it on from the line. We're going to say new part dot anchored equals true. Now most of you know what an anchored part is, it's just a part that can't move in our 3D space. And then we're going to say new part dot parent equals game dot workspace. And that's going to make sure it's inside of the workspace so it's not in some invisible temporary folder. And then we need to move over the new part to the position that the mouse hit. So we can do this by saying new part dot position equals hit position, okay? Just like that. And now what this is going to do is it's going to move the part to where the mouse hit in our 3D world. Then we want our part to be invisible so that the player can't see it. We can do this by saying new part dot transparency equals one. That means the part is 100% transparent. And then we can start off by creating our attachments. So let's create an attachment on the new part. We can do this by saying attachment create with a capital C comma and then new part. Then if you want to, we can copy this line and then we're going to do the exact same for the humanoid root part. And what this does is it creates two attachments, one in the new part and one in the humanoid root part. Then we can continue with the coding. So next, what we need to do is we need to create a rope constraint. And in this scenario, the rope constraint is the grapple hook. So we do this by saying instance.new rope constraint. Now that creates the rope. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say rope.parent equals new part, okay? So let's try set this actually to become a variable. So let's say local rope equals instance.new.rope constraint. And now we can do all of these things to the rope. So let's say rope.parent equals new part. This means the rope is now the new part. Now that means the rope constraint is now parent of the new part. So it's inside, so it's inside of the new part. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say rope dot attachment zero equals new part dot attachment. Then we're going to say, okay, um, what am I doing here? New part dot attachment. Okay, make sure you spell it right as it's easy to make a mistake with attachment. Then we say rope dot attachment one okay equals humanoid root part dot attachment and then it's really important that you put the correct spelling next we're going to turn this rope into a winch so we're going to say rope dot winch enabled equals true and that means the rope will pull the user up then what we're going to do is we're going to say rope dot winch force equals and then just a big number okay which is a big number, that's all. Then we're going to say rope.restuition equals zero. And then we're going to say rope.color equals rope color, which is the color we defined above in our variables. We're going to drop a line and we're going to say rope.visible equal rope.visible. And then we're going to say rope.length. And you can play around with this, but I say distance divided by 2 works the best. However, you could try just distance or distance divided by 3, that's up to you. I just personally think that gives the best effect. Then we're going to say rope.winchspeed equals winchspeed, which once again is the variable we defined above. And then we can start with a part of the script that handles if the mouse button is still down. So we're going to say while mouse down which is a variable we set above, equal, equal, true, do, drop a line, just to make sure it's clear, wait, and then we can end. Then after this, so after the user stops holding down their mouse button, we're going to say attachment, and then we're going to say destroy, comma, new part, and then attachment, destroy, humanoid root part, then we're going to say new part dot rope oops dot rope that's it dot rope constraint colon destroy then new part destroy and then what we can do is we can just say 
debounce equals false and make sure you do this after the end okay so debounce equals false now the reason that we put the debounce underneath this false is we want to make sure that the user can still make a rope even if they're past max distance if they try again and it's a bit closer so what that last part does is it waits while the mouse button is down to make sure that the winch still works while the mouse button is being held down and then after the mouse button is no longer held down it destroys both the attachment it destroys the rope constraint and then it destroys the part and then once again, because this part is over, we can hide this block, pretend it never exists, and debounce equals false. Now, that was quite a lot of work we had to do there. Let's go try test it out. So I'm going to create a part. Let's scale it up. Let's make sure our rope is visible, so our rope visible is true. And we should have a yellow rope. Hopefully that looks cool. Let's move it over there. Okay, so let's start off by playing. Okay, we're loading in. Now let's have a look at our output view. Output. Okay, that's just a plugin. Okay, no errors. That's a good start. Okay, let's try by doing something really, really far. So let's click over here. Okay, it doesn't work. Uh oh. Okay, play GUI, dog grapple hook system, line 38. Set boolean to index. Okay. So it looks like we're trying to set something wrong here. So let's head to line 38. Let's have a quick look. 38 local hit position equals mouse down dot hit dot p let's have a look here with what could have gone wrong uh -huh. so we accidentally made a minor mistake here all we need to do is make sure we say mouse instead of mouse down now let's publish that stop it and try running it again so let's play we're loading okay let's try clicking far away again for looks like we have another error line 13 effective 3 and an instance line 13 perform arithmetic so it's trying to perform maths on a vector 3 in an instance okay this could be an easy mistake yes humanoid root part should be humanoid root part dot position okay now let's try publish stop try that again hopefully all goes well Okay, let's click. Attachments must be parented to a base part or another attachment. So it looks like we didn't set the parent correctly. Let's check. New part. Okay, that's strange. Give me a second, let me figure this out. Okay, once again, a silly mistake. I should have said parent here instead of player, so it's just a typo. Then let's Alt P, save, publish, do whatever you need to, and let's give it another go. Hopefully no more errors from here on out. Okay, we click far away. Oh, wow, okay. I think we set the limit. Okay, I just set the limit really high. Or did I? Oh, look, we have the winch there. And if we once again set it really, really far, yep, it doesn't work. But it's only a certain... Okay, I would turn down the speed on that. That is very fast, but it works. Ah. Nevertheless, look at this. It works. And up we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can easily make a rope inside of Rob Studio. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I know I did. It was quite a long one, so keep in mind the script can be found down below if you are a nice, lazy person just like me. Thank you for tuning in. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed, and bye-bye.